Now, moving on to skew t log p. Uh, skew t log p, or skew t as it's known in short, is used to analyze the vertical profile of certain weather variables. Uh, these data are, are collected by weather balloons and include temperature, dew point, and wind. So um, the constant temperature lines are skewed up and to the right. So that's the, the skew t part of it skewed up and to the right. And the log P is that pressure decreases logarithmically with height. So skew T log P. Now skew T analysis assumes parcel theory. Um, parcel theory basically says that a parcel is like a bubble of air. So you can think of it, it's a hot air balloon. It's like a bubble of air. Um, and the assumptions in parcel theory is that no heat leaves or enters uh, the parcel. So that's known as the adiabatic assumption. Uh, the moisture content stays the same. Everything is self-contained. Like I said, there's no mixing and rain is not a factor. So there's no drag force. But in reality, we know that dry air can mix out um, a surface parcel. We see this from time to time out there um, on the plains where you have really great moisture in the morning, but when the uh, sun comes out, the, the, thermals begin, begins to mix the air, and you actually end up with lower surface dew points. Um, that's not the case in parcel theory, but that is that has to be our assumption. So sometimes CAPE is an overestimate, particularly in situations where you do have um, drier air above the surface. Uh, CAPE, uh, by the way, meaning convective available potential energy, or just a measure of how a strong an updraft in a storm might be. Also, rain is a factor in real life, uh, produces a kind of a drag force. So um, these are not included in parcel theory. So something to keep in mind. <clears throat> so here's what the chart actually looks like. And I'm just kind of zoomed in a little bit. Uh, the chart goes above this, but really want to show you the lines because they're kind of tiny. So we want to zoom in really well so you can see what's going on here. So the first thing I wanted to point out is this left side, you do see decreasing pressure uh, with height. So as you're going up is, is higher in the atmosphere. And you can see that the numbers are decreasing on the left. So that's in millibars. So that means that pressure is decreasing and they get a little bit more spread out as you these lines of um, pressure get a little more spread out as you go up the chart. These are your isotherms in red. So this uh, represents temperature. So again, skew T. So these are moving from lower left to upper right. Um, kind of a weird way to look at temperature, but uh, you get used to it after a little while. Um, then the dry adiabats here in the blue. So uh, adiabat meaning uh, no heat exchange. So if you move air up the dry adiabat, it will cool at 9.8 Celsius per kilometer. This dry air will do that. Now, if you saturate it, that's a different story. That's known as a moist adiabat, and that rate is a little bit uh, lower than the dry adiabat, so it cools at a slower rate. And that ends up being important, thinking about this in terms of the hot air balloon. So we'll get into this in terms of latent heat release. So this particular image, this particular figure, shows you something very important about severe weather. And let's start by looking at water vapor. So this would be, you can kind of think about it like the air near the surface of the earth, um, right? Air you can wear on the big uh, severe weather days, you know, very juicy, balmy air. Um, when that moves up in height, right, it gets cooler as you get above the surface and then the air condenses. So when it condenses, that means it moves from water vapor to liquid water. And as you can see, and if you're moving from vapor to liquid, you're moving essentially from right to left here in this particular image. And that means that heat has been released to the environment, which means that your hot air balloon is warmer than its surroundings. So again, here's the idea. Yeah, warm light air in the hot air balloon, think just after condensation occurs as you're lifting a parcel of air and around it, you have the environmental air, which is relatively cool and heavy. So what this means is that you have a pressure gradient force, um, you know, essentially pointing upward, right? High to low. So it's pushed this cool, heavy air is pushing this warm, light air upwards. Now gravity is 
operating in the opposite direction. However, in general, you do have a net upward force, and this is known as buoyancy. So it's just, if you've ever heard the term convective available, a convective available potential energy, this is what that represents. So one thing I wanted to do is put the dry adiabats and the moist adiabats in the same view. Um, notice how the moist adiabats, once you get to the top part of the chart here, kind of in the upper levels of the troposphere, notice how the moist adiabats align with the dry, dry adiabats there. And the reason is because the moist adiabats will act like dry adiabats when they've released all of the heat energy down here. So basically down here, that hot air balloon is nice and warm because you're changing phase from uh, water vapor to liquid water. But once you get way up here, you've already removed all that moisture. So you get almost in line, like you can see right here that the moist adiabat and the dry adiabat are basically on top of each other. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, and then the constant water vapor mixing ratio. So this is basically a way to think about this is this is essentially dew point temperature. So these are you know, slanted almost in the same direction as the temperature lines. Maybe a, a little bit, there's a little bit of difference and I'll explain here in a second what that actually corresponds to and why that's important. But uh, generally speaking, um, you, you, these correspond to surface dew point temperatures. Let me get right into the, the mixing ratio lines, crossing the temperature lines. So you can notice how the um, the red lines here, which are the temperature lines, they uh, slant slightly differently than the water vapor mixing ratio lines. So this is how much uh, liquid water there is per um, you know unit of dry air, and you can see that if, this is why a 55 dew point at Rapid City, South Dakota, is actually worth more than at Norman. So let me explain in the analysis how this works out. So let's say that Rapid City, South Dakota has a surface pressure of 890 millibars. So it's slightly elevated. It's kind of in the, the higher planes there. Um, so if it has a 55 dew point, that's 13 Celsius, right? So by the way, that's where Rapid City is. And that's the dew point of 55 plotted on the chart. Um, that water vapor mixing ratio is 12 grams per kilogram or approximately. Now, if you took that same water vapor mixing ratio and moved it down to 960 millibars, which is where Norman, Oklahoma is, you'd actually get a 61 degree dew point. So what, I, what that means is that the 55 degree dew point at Rapid City is the same as a 61 degree dew point at Norman, which means that whenever you're in the higher terrain and you see higher dew points, that that's something to watch out for. Um, so um, something to bear in mind as you're, you're forecasting out there. Now let's do an example profile. Um, so this is a temperature profile that's kind of wild. So this would be basically following the dry 80 back through um, looks like about 850, 900 millibars. And then it kind of noses out and moves isothermally until you get to 800 and then cools dry adiabatically uh, as you go aloft, which is not a realistic profile. This would be you know, an unbelievable amount of cape, but just for uh, reference here, that's what we have. And then dew point temperature, this would be kind of uh, the same thing. You're not really going to ever see something like this out there, but just for uh, grins and just to show you uh, what this looks like, that's what the dew point temperature would be just to the left. So um, cooler dew point uh, temperature, then your air temperature, if they were the same, then that would be saturated. So generally speaking, your dew point is going to be to the left of your temperature unless it's right on top of it. Now, how to find the LCL. Now, the LCL is the lifting condensation level. So that's basically the, the level at which the air condenses as it's, it's being lifted. And um, you can think of that basically like cloud base. Um, so what you do to find the LCL is you start at your surface temperature, in this case it's very close to 30 degrees, and you follow the dry adiabat upwards. And so you lift dry adiabatically, and at the same time, you start with your surface dew point, which is a little bit above 20 C, really, really high moisture, and you follow that up the mixing ratio, the line of constant mixing ratio there which happens to be co-located with our actual dew point profile here. And where that meets, 
is the lifting condensation level. That's the error or the, the level at which condensation occurs. Now, I just want you to know that the, in this case, you may actually uh, see a profile that doesn't, you know, the actual ter temperature profile doesn't follow that dry day bat nicely, but you still want to lift dry day batically. And the same for the dew point temperature. It doesn't always follow a nice constant mixing ratio, um, but you do want to follow a constant mixing ratio line when you do find the LCL. By the way, if you do have this situation where you have uh, the temperature profile following the dry eighty bat and the dew point temperature following a mixing ratio line, that's known as well mixed. Um, so this would be the case you would, you know, if the atmosphere were particularly well mixed, um, that's what you would see. The LCL, uh, if you were going to look at that visually, here is a thunderstorm picture I took in 2020 and essentially the LCL would just be cloud base. So where that air first condenses as it's lifted up, that's the lifting condensation level. And it turns out the lower that is, the higher the likelihood of tornadoes. Um, there's a lot that goes into it, but there's been some research on that topic. Okay, so we've talked about this example profile. Um, now we want to find the LFC. The LFC is the level of free convection. So just because you get to the LCL doesn't mean the air is just gonna continue rising. Uh, sometimes it has to deal with uh, some inhibition or a cap that keeps it from, from rising once uh, condensation occurs. Um, by the way, above the LCL, you do follow this moist 80 bat. That's essentially the parcel temperature. And you'll follow that all the way up as you go up the profile here. But where that meets the environmental temperature is the level of free convection. So basically, once it gets above this height, say like right here, that means that your parcel temperature, a.k.a. your hot air balloon, is to the right of your environmental temperature, which means that your hot air balloon is hotter than the environment. So it will continue to rise. So that's why it's the level of free convection, so meaning freely moving air in the upward direction. So if you're going to see this in real life, you might think that the LFC is basically the level above the striations or the laminar type of clouds um, that are between the LCL and say the bubbly cumulus above that. So basically where that goes from laminar to puffy, that's roughly where you uh, see the LFC. Okay, so and then it turns out that the area that is between the parcel temperature or the moist adiabat here and the environmental temperature, that area in between is known as your convective available potential energy. And that just basically shows you the potential for updrafts uh, within a given thunderstorm environment. So again, your parcel temperature here is to the right of your environmental temperature, meaning that your hot air balloon is warmer than the environment, and so it will continue to rise. So there's potential energy. Okay, so what happens if you increase the temperature aloft here? So this is the temperature line, the environmental temperature. What happens when you increase that? Well, it turns out that you actually decrease that area, so that decreases CAPE. So you decrease the amount of energy you have for updrafts. What happens if you decrease that temperature aloft? You move that red line to the left. Well, you increase CAPE. Now, what happens if you increase your surface temperature, which is like right here? So let's move that off to the right. Well, it does a few things. Number one, increase that, that area in the CAPE because we had a higher, uh, essentially parcel temperature than uh, we had previously a lot more energy, so we have a lot more CAPE. We also decreased uh, the convective inhibition, which, by the way, I didn't talk about. That's negative area, so that's to the right of the parcel temperature and to the left of the environmental temperature. Um, so this would be like the lid or the cap or whatever you would call it. And, but that would decrease if you m increase your surface temperature. But interestingly enough, it would also increase your lifting condensation levels so your cloud base would rise. So that might not be super helpful for uh, developing tornadoes. So something to bear in mind there as your temperature increases, you're going to get more CAPE, um, but you're also going to increase your LCL. Now, if you increase dew point, what's going to happen here? So let's see, 
got your dew point right here near 20. So you increase it, whoa, you go way off to the right to near 25. You see a huge increase in CAPE and you do see oh, convective inhibition basically gone. So this is like the Bangladesh soundings that you've, you see with massive CAPE and um, just a huge cap that gets eroded, um, 9,000 CAPE, that's kind of that situation. Um, really not gonna happen in real life in most cases, but um, point being here is that when you increase that dew point, um, you really massively increase um, the cape despite only maybe raising the dew point by a degree or two. So it is actually really important when you're out there forecasting, trying to forecast tornadoes for storm chasing, that you want to look at surface dew point temperatures and understand that where you do see that increase in moisture, if you see a, a, a you know a slog of higher dew point air moving in a uh, direction of your target, that could be really good for increasing CAPE. Okay, equilibrium level. This is the level above the level of free convection at which the parcel temperature equals the temperature of the environment. So basically right here, you can see the parcel temperature in this kind of like dotted line, right? Where that crosses the red line there, that's the equilibrium level. Um, this is essentially the level of, of the anvil where this all kind of um, flattens out. So every, you've seen this with thunderstorms, ordinary thunderstorms as well, where you know the air goes up and then it hits an invisible lid and then it sort of spreads out. That's where that happens. And um, sometimes you see overshoots, right? You see you know, the updraft gets so strong, this momentum carries it above that equilibrium level. And um, that's known as an overshooting top and it really indicates a very powerful updraft. 